Hi everyone, in today's lecture, we're gonna go over how to work with the F110 simulator and some introduction on the structure of the simulator. So we'll cover um, how the ROS nodes in the simulator are set up today, and we can, how we can add new motion planners in the simulator, and we, how do we combine pep planners for more complex racing strategies. A little bit of overview on ROS. So a node is an executable that uses ROS to communicate with other nodes. And nodes can publish messages to a topic as well as subscribe to a topic to receive messages. And messages are ROS data types that's being communicated through topics. This is the ROS node graph of the simulator. So it has three major parts. The first one is the simulator node itself that handles the physics. There's a multiplexer node that handles the input and there are multiple different planners. The simulator node. So this is the most important in the core of the simulator. This node itself listens to drive messages for commanding velocity and steering angle. And then after receiving those commands, it updates the car state using the dynamic bicycle model. It performs and publishes laser scans. It also publish odometry and you won't have to change anything in this file since everything is already set up for you. And a little bit more detail on the simulator node. Um, so basically, the input for the node is speed and steering angle, and the output is the synthesized laser scan and odometry for your vehicle. The next major part of the simulator is the MUX node. Um, so this is a, the multiplexer is a concept from electronics where it is a device that selects between several input signals and forwards it to a single output line. It also takes a select input which is used to select which input to forward to the output. So in our MUX node in the simulator, it listens to drive messages from all planners, joysticks, and the keyboard. It also listens to a MUX message. This is basically the input select message from the behavior control node. And then it publishes a single drive message to be read by the simulator node. The next is the behavior controller node. Um, this node determines which planner is on and publishes this to the MUX channel. It also listens to joysticks and keyboard presses in order to switch between channels. And by default, each planner is mapped to a keyboard and joystick button and user can manually toggle between them. In the behavior controller node, we've set up the joystick to have these um, several functionalities. And you can see the mapping, the key mapping here. Um, you have the LB button, the left, left um, shoulder bump button on the top to enable joysticks. And then you'll have the A and the B button to enable random driver and auto e-brake. And the two joysticks are for speed and steering. Um, to make sure everything is correctly mapped in, on your system, you need to check the button indices by echoing the joy topic. They might vary between joysticks. So switching between channels is easy. Um, manual toggling of navigation and random driver channels is shown on the right. So this is um, some messages that you will see being printed out in the terminal that's running the simulator. Um, and when a collision happened in the simulator, the MUX wouldn't allow any message through until the user have decided to switch to a different channel and then... So manual toggling of navigation and random driver channels is shown on the right in the animation. So this is an example output from the terminal that's running the simulator. And when collision occurs, the MUX wouldn't allow any message through. So you'll have to um, select a channel manually and then back the car out of the collision. Uh, now, back to the graph. So inside the package, we'll... All right, coming back to the graph, next we'll go over the code structure and what you can, where you can find all these nodes in the GitHub repository. So inside the package, the important directories are the launch directory, which includes all the launch file that start up the simulator. You also have the maps folder, which contains all the virtual environments that you can use. 
you have a node directory that can includes all the nodes being written in C++. And then you also have a params.yaml file, which is the configuration file for all the parameters in the simulator. So uh, next we're gonna go over how to add a new planner. So first of all, you need to add a new drive topic name, a new MUX index, and a new keyboard corrector or joystick button index in the params.yaml file. So for example, we've shown here um, how to toggle the MUX in a few lines of code. These are the few parameters that you'll need to add for your new planning method. And then next, you'll need to make the node itself and then launch the node in simulator.launch. You can do that by making a new channel instance at the end of the MUX constructor in MUX.cpp. This is to let the MUX uh, multiplexer know that you have a new channel. And next, you'll need to add joystick and keyboard callbacks in behaviorcontroller.cpp. You'll need a new few uh, member variables to the class. You'll, you'll need to add a few member variables to the class. And then we have some uh, comments in the code on how to do this. Um, next, we'll go over what we have set up so far. Um, we have an a, a, a automatic emergency braking logic in the behavior controller. We have an AEB channel in the multiplexer. We also have a general navigation channel in MUX. That's for uh, later on if you want to add a new um, motion platter. You can toggle the AEB being active, not but not engaged. This means that you're turning it on so that if it uh, comes to a situation where it needs to be activated, it'll, it'll do so. Um, you can press B on the keyboard by enabling that functionality. Um, the behavioral controller only acts upon joystick or keyboard presses for now. You can modify the behavior controller to switch between planners during a race, depending on your sensor data. Um, so, for example, you can switch between planners that are focused on speed and or a planner that focus, focuses on obstacle avoidance. And so you'll need to find this balance yourself. And that's it for this part.